up to this point, the things that we've been doing have really been um, background content type of stuff. Uh, the same sort of structure stuff that you would do in any kind of normal web page. Getting the HTML right, getting the CSS right, um, getting the, you know, the structure within the different documents and all that lined up and straightened out. And you can do with that the stuff that we've been doing, and you have to do it for any kind of web page that's, that's using style sheets. And so today we're going to we're going to really shift gears and and now we're going to start doing the dynamic stuff. And so uh the the way that we're going to be working today is we're going to start introducing media queries and uh working through them so that you can see what's going on. So I've set up uh, I've gone ahead and um you've seen this content before in the in the previous videos. And what I've done is I've introduced a series of media queries in here. And a media query is simply a um, a device that will uh, query means to ask or to probe, to uh, to seek. And so what it does is it, is it seeks information. Um, in this case, this is this is the format of it. So what it's doing, it's saying, um, okay, if the media type is screen. So in other words, if this is going to a device rather than a printer or a a braille device or something like that. If it's going to something with a screen, so it's going to be displayed. So if the media is a screen and the minimum width in this case, I'm going to be using minimum width and I'm going to talk to you about maximum width in a little while too and, and show you the, the distinct differences because they're they are, uh, subtle but huge. Uh, and so we've got the media is a screen and the minimum width of, is 320. And then what it does is it introduces a rule. And, and that rule actually, and I'm going to pull up the whole block, I'm selecting the block here, that rule starts with this curly bracket and it ends with this curly bracket. And again, I'll select the block so that you can see that. So um, just like all these other uh, CSS rules, they have a, a, um, a selector and then they have got the um, the brackets there that hold the the different attributes of the CSS rule. Well, in this case, a media query is a CSS rule, but it holds all these other rules inside of it. So, uh, when it um, when we're looking at the cascade and it's coming through, it reads all this stuff first. Then it comes to this media query, and if it is a screen and the minimum width of three hundred is three hundred and twenty. 20 pixels, then it's going to read this set of rules in, and then it's going, going to go on. And uh, then it will encounter this one next because the cascade. And so then it's going to say, again, okay, if we got a media is a screen and the minimum width is 640 pixels. So if that's false, if, um, if, if the minimum width is not 640 pixels, uh, if it's larger than 640 pixels, then uh, it's going to read that. If it's um, okay, so when the browser comes through here, it's going to load the HTML. When it gets to the link that said read the CSS, it's going to come to this document before it renders the rest of the page. And so it's going to come to this document and it is going to start reading these things from the top down. So it'll go through the entire sp um, style sheet reading. And it sees there are no conditions on this. So it just automatically reads that. So if there are no other conditions that are met, these are the rules that are going to apply. And the rules I have are just the, the colors that I set up in the previous uh, example videos. So it's going to read that, and then it's going to come to this media query. And a media query is simply, query means to probe or ask or to draw from. And so what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, is the media a screen? And if it is a screen and the minimum width is 320 pixels, so if it's larger than 320 pixels, then it's going to load this content in there. So this content is everything within 
that block because this is one CSS rule. This media query is a CSS rule. And then it's going to load all these other ones that sit within those curly brackets because those compromise one rule. So if, if the media is a screen and the minimum width is 320 pixels, so if it's anything greater than 320 pixels, it's going to read that. And so um, if you go to there with say a phone that is less than 320 pixels it's going to read this and then it's 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 not gonna read the the rest of that in there because that doesn't apply but if it's 320 pixels or more it's gonna read this content in and that content because it is the same rules is gonna override this content and the same thing goes on as we move forward the next query that it comes to is a minimum width of 640 pixels. So it's going to look at that and it's going to say, okay, well, if it is um, um, larger than 640 pixels or 640 pixels or larger, then I'm going to read it in and that's going to overcome this. But if I'm 639 pixels or less, then it's going to apply these rules. And same thing, I, I've set them for 640 pixels and 960 pixels. And the reason I chose those numbers are because uh, this represents the, the four column grid four times um, uh, four times 80. And I might as well go ahead and put that in here as a comment. Okay, so it, it's going to read that, and and then it's going to move on through the rest of that. And you need to, you should probably get in the habit of um, making yourself comments in the CSS. I'm going to be looking for that. It'll be in the HTML too. A comment comes between a forward slash star and a star forward slash, and you'll know in expression it's green. I don't know what the color coding is in Dreamweaver off the top of my head, but it will change. And so uh, this one has I'm just going to copy this cuz I'm going to reuse it again. I'll just change it si slightly. Same thing with 400 pixels or 640 pixels, that was 8 columns wide by 80. And so you can see how this relates to the prototype that I've done. And the way that this is going to lay out is that this will be for anything under 320 pixels. This will be for anything between 320 and 640. And then this will be for anything between 640 and 960. And this will be for anything uh, larger than 960 pixels. And so um, when we go ahead and save that, and I'm, I'm right-clicking there, and, and then I publish that, then what I'm going to do is I've uh, opened up a series of browsers so that we can see what's going on here. And I want to make sure these are reloaded so that they have the current information. And you'll see that what these are is at the different breakpoints. So uh, this is under 320 pixels. So it loads that initial color scheme. And did you notice how it shifted there? Well, that's what this represents is um, anything between the 320 and 640. So when it gets down below 320, it, it defaults back. But at 320 to 640, it'll be there. And then when it gets above 640, it shifts. So it, this is the representation of those minimum attributes. And uh, let me just go back real quick to show you how come I have these different colors. What I did uh, just to help you visualize this is I took this same set of code and I pasted it into each of the media queries only I shifted the color code down one uh, in each section. So uh, whereas before if it was uh, the wrapper was CCFFFF uh, then in the second one, I shifted that down so that the header became CCFFFF, -F -F -F, and then whatever was down at the bottom, 00FFCC, uh, then becomes the top. So I shift everything down. When it gets to the bottom, it comes to the top. And that's just so that you could visualize and, and 
actively and graphically see how that shifts um, just by changing the color codes when we come to uh, the different size of uh, browsers. Now when we come out to this one and we just start narrowing it down you're gonna hit it see it hit all those breakpoints so that's above 960 when it gets to 959 it changes to the next color code when it gets down to 639 it shifts to the next one and then when it gets down to 319 it shifts to the last one and that's because that viewport is changing and as it hits those different uh, query points uh, the the browser uh, interprets the rules that have been, been put in front of it and it changes those viewports now there's another thing this is using minimum width and that worked really well um, and let me just bring you back into the code uh, so I was working with minimum widths here and I started so that uh, it loads the the smallest device first so we're looking at a uh, mobile up design now in the textbook that we were using they are working with maximum widths so I've, I've created a another document it's the exact same document and I've created another CSS document that uses maximum widths and you'll notice I've done this this page is exactly the same as the other except for I've changed the minimum width to maximum widths and um, done that across the board but let me show you how this makes a huge difference again we're starting with small and going to to the big so I come in here and I've made a link with all of these I've created a hyperlink to that second page just so that you can see what happens and when we get in here you'll see that it's not behaving oh, let me get all these reloaded you'll notice that they're not all giving us um, the rules like we might expect that one hasn't reloaded properly um, it's not all behaving differently different pages are doing different things but uh, these two are running the same exact color scheme so let's go and look and see what happens when we use this maximum width view instead of the um, the other view what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've loaded these documents with the maximum width settings and based upon what we just did with the minimum widths you would expect that they have I'm, I'm just looking at the wrapper colors here you would expect there to be different colors for each of the sizes because we have rules set up that say for a maximum width of whatever to load this uh, um, this different set of styles so um, at for a maximum width width of 320 pixels I would expect this sort of greenish color to be in there but when I come back and actually view it that greenish color never shows up we are at this red color that is in place until we get to the really broad larger than 960 pixels so so why is it behaving like that and and this is an important thing to understand this is one of the subtleties that can make you crazy about doing this kind of design and it we need to look at the cascade to understand why it's not applying our rules even though it's CNN and, and actually it is applying the rules but they're being overwritten by the cascade so um, the first one is this sort of bluish color and I'm just looking at the wrapper color then green and then we have uh, that darker or brighter green whichever you prefer it and then at the 960 the red shows up and except that when we are in the uh, looking at the actual sites the red shows up until it's much larger than 960 pixels and then what shows up is the color from the original style sheet so let's look at what's happening with the min width it's going through and um, 
if it's a minimum of this size, it applies the rule, and then it stops. And and for the the larger ones, it reads it. So let me let me see if I can make this clear. Now that we're in the maximum width, it's reading these set of rules in, and those are going to apply unless it's overwritten. So we come to this 320 pixel max width, which is your cell phone, and it up to that cell phone size it's going to read this in and those rules will be applied but it keeps going it doesn't stop there it continues to read the entire cascade so if we're looking at our cell phone our cell phone is also going to read this because it's still underneath that maximum width of 640 so this set of rules has come in and overruled the ones at the 320 and the same thing happens here um, with the 960 so what ends up happening is that for up to 960 all those other rules except for the very first ones are being overruled so these are, are brought in and they're overruled at 320 because there's a max width of three pi 320 pixels. And then we've got a max width of 640, so that overrides those rules. But then when we've got the max width of 960, um, it overrides the rules up to that 960. But when we go to our browser and we go over 960 pixels, which is right about here, then it goes back to that original rule. So what's happening is all of these are applying the rules for the max width of 960, even though they are smaller. So when we are designing for maximum widths, we have got to change uh, the way that we're doing that, and it makes the, the mobile design a little bit um, where it might be better to design for min width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to move the, the max width of 320 pixels to the end. And then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to invert the whole thing except for the original one. So we've got 320 pixels at the bottom. And then we'll put 640 in between the 960. So I just grabbed the 640. And I put it in here. So now we're going from large to small. So instead of mobile to uh, large screen, we're going sort of large screen down to mobile. So let's save this. and we'll publish it. I'm just right clicking there and then when I minimize this and I reload these let's see what happens. Now it's behaving the way that you would expect it to because the, with the max width of 320 that's now the last rule that's read and so that's overriding the max of 640 and the max of 960 and then when it gets um, all the way to the the over max 60 it's going to the the default um, as well so that's one of those subtle things about doing this that you you really need to be aware of the context um, and the direction that the cascades going if you don't completely understand that cascade you are going to find yourself in fits and that's why we've spent so much time uh, talking about the cascade and um, it's also why when you're doing a mobile uh, mobile first design so you're building from mobile up you're probably going to want to use uh, minimum widths instead of maximum widths because you don't want your uh, mobile phone to read all of those other things like you might have a huge background image included in here well if it loads that on that mobile phone that's wasting bandwidth so if you use the minimum width it's it loads the ones that are relevant to it and it doesn't load the ones that are not relevant to it and uh, so that's the way that the cascade is crucial to work with the media queries here is our first set of media queries